Okay. Uh, thank you very much um, uh, to Brian for very splendidly again organising this as he did at um, Bergen last year. Um, the um, astronomers and the crystallographers um, have a very fine tradition in uh, making available uh, data um, with its uh, publications. Um, both communities take a pride in that. Um, a publication, uh, certainly in experimental science, rests on data. It's the platform. Other fields, many, don't provide data. And to me, the publication then, and I'm not the first to say it, is in free fall. It is unclear what it rests upon. So data is very important. And in Madrid, um, the... IUCR president, Sine Larsen, and the executive committee uh, decided it was a timely moment to revisit uh, the question of our activities with the um, uh, availability of data, and raw data in particular, um, of relevance to all of its um, commissions. So it's a very diverse task um, that the uh, working group that was set up has been given, which I have the privilege to chair. And several of the colleagues are here. Um, Lowe's, Brian, John Westbrook um, are here directly, and the consultant, Herbert Bernstein, is here too. Um, so we have heard from Brian terminology. And this is a very important point, and we are clear about what we mean, and it fits... Um, quite well with other scientific communities, raw data, processed data, and derived data. So diffraction images, if you will, structure factors, and coordinates, and B factors. Out there, there are other terms like big data and massive data, and these are colloquial terminologies which um, we commend to core data, and we have the new executive secretary here, Simon Hodson, to uh, try and find a way of imposing a bit of discipline on such terminology so that communities and different scientific disciplines can talk to each other with clarity because there is a lack of clarity um, in those ways. Now this is Brian's slide. It's a very clear and uh, useful list of why we publish data and if you will this underpins what we have been doing for decades and um, we've heard already from previous speakers um, all of these things. Um, we haven't heard mention of the pitfall that befell our field a few years ago with fraud because we had examples of um, articles that were based on fraudulent data, both in chemical and biological uh, areas. And so things have been tightened up. Um, and done with um, attention to the derived and the processed data without appeal so far to raw data. So that's an interesting um, uh, point uh, that is a feature of whether extension to raw data might assist us. Um, I was very impressed by Brian's uh, showing of the powder zooming in. Because for teaching and learning, I thought, as well as communication of research results, that was a really splendid opportunity uh, for teaching um, and learning. Um, time is short. I think you're familiar with that sort of list. And the data flow diagram Brian has shown, um, and I think he postponed the explanation to, to somebody like me, and of course we haven't really got time, but I would say that um, as you progress to the right-hand side, you have... The, uh, the blue and the light green, and the orange, the raw data, remains at the left-hand side. So it doesn't so far, by our community practice, um, feature uh, in publication or the databases. Um, but the raw data does languish um, in uh, the laboratories where it's measured. Um, be it the synchrotron, the neutron source, or the home laboratory. And so these boundaries look very fixed. 
Um, but it's a moving uh, situation, both in terms of capability, um, storage opportunity, but also um, what is expected of us by government and agencies and what we can do for ourselves and in assisting each other with more detailed and penetrating interpretation of the raw measurements. So why publish raw crystallographic diffraction data? We take decisions as professionals. Um, what is the symmetry layout of a crystal? What is the diffraction resolution limit? There may be interesting diffuse scattering, which we say, well, we can't interpret that. Uh, we'll have to leave it. Developers are hard at work on software, um, and they may squeeze more out of the data we've measured. Um, the raw data may help uh, better prevent fraud. Um, and we have examples, I'm sure I certainly have one, I, I will own up to it, where I've struggled and still cannot solve a particular crystal structure. And I've done the various things of sharing with colleagues and uh, people I respect and trust and so on. But in the end, might a repository for impossible data sets um, be a good thing? Now... In a leading from the front moment uh, for the diffraction data deposition working group, um, and since I had the opportunity to work on some anti-cancer agent uh, uh, chemicals, cisplatin and carboplatin, and their binding to histidine uh, in uh, a protein, um, it seemed a very timely moment to combine the policy examination with the research work and make the raw data available. And I'd made a collaboration with Lowe's and her group at Utrecht. And accompanying um, the uh, study um, are the raw diffraction images um, made available at um, the uh, IUCR um, website. And we have in JSC and in Actor F um, the suite of um, uh, data sets. I uh, checked with uh, Lowe's uh, yesterday, and um, it seems that there, I mean, there's 5,000 accesses, um, but these are probably search engines. There's 25 that look um, serious. And there's a mirror of our data sets at the uh, Australian TARDIS, which was set up. Uh, by the Australian Research Council, particularly with respect to the Australian Synchrotron. And they've had 12 downloads of our data. It's not itemised. Um, that's the development for later in the year. Um, and they've had 250 um, scrutinies of um, the data. So that is perhaps what might be considered more activity uh, than one could have hoped for uh, in looking at our uh, raw data. So the practical uh, aspect of this is that it was doable. Um, secondly, people are interested, um, and um, the metadata needs that went with that um, are quite intricate. And as part of the uh, J. Apple Crisp paper, Lowe's wrote a very careful description of metadata uh, that is to go with the raw data images. But in addition, we're uh, expanding that description um, in the our contribution in the suite of articles for Act D that Tom Twilliger is bringing together. And we have a, a draft that's gone off um, to uh, Tom Twilliger for uh, detailed comment. Now, I gave you the statistics of um, downloads of these data and people looking at it. Um, one person in particular um, did it very seriously, and that was Kai uh, Diedrichs, who was the maintainer of the XDS uh, software package. And so together, and with his reprocessing, um, we ended up chasing down some very interesting weak anomalous uh, signals. And this came from um, chlorine. 
and in particular the carboplatin um, underwent a partial chemical conversion to cisplatin when bound to the histidine under the challenge of high sodium chloride concentration that we'd use for the crystallization. And so chlorine, the signal, and a partially occupied one at that, you're looking at a very tiny um, uh, value. So we're down here at uh, copper K alpha. Okay, and so we've got a tiny signal in the F double prime, and it's a fraction of that because it's a partial com chemical conversion. <coughs> so as a result of sharing the data, and here's the, the screenshot uh, of the J apple crisp, and like Brian with his powder data, you can uh, click on here and, and um, see the raw data and the link to Utrecht. So it's a personal web link at the moment um, and the uh, TARDIS archive, archive in Australia. So the actual chemistry here, um, the, the uh, in, in comparing XDS processing by Kai and our own work uh, with the Utrecht program Eval, Eval um, we were able to see this very small uh, signal um, of the um, partially occupied chlorine of the uh, chemical conversion and it was visible in fact also in the uh, Eval uh, maps. So this is just the genuine benefit of the sharing uh, of data and, and uh, working together. So it's an example of the limit of visibility in terms of signal to noise. Now in terms of policy matters, um, the uh, terms of reference in effect uh, I already uh, gave you, the Sydney Larson and the IUCR executive uh, vision and the membership of the working group uh, in addition to those present, um, we have um, Steve Andrew Larkis from TARDIS um, in Australia, Sol Gruner in the States, and Heinz Joseph uh, Weyer uh, from Switzerland. He's very much involved in uh, e the EC uh, funding for the linking together of uh, synchrotron uh, facilities. And by invitation, all the chairs and delegates of the IUCR com commissions are in contact with us um, over these various matters. Uh, Gerard Bricoin uh, sent his apologies, he couldn't be uh, with us today, but he's very active in helping and assisting uh, us in, in the deliberations. Tom Terwilliger, um, very much a linchpin person, I referred to him uh, earlier, <coughs> as did uh, Brian, and we're in close contact with Tom pretty much uh, weekly, uh, even daily. Now the options, um, could the databases handle this? Um, and John Westbrook provided a very thoughtful uh, and detailed uh, presentation of this in Bergen. Uh, the presentations are available on the web. Um, could the journals um, handle um, these things? And in both cases, one on affordability and the other on uh, network capacity, um, it, it really isn't possible at the current time to simply extend to raw data um, the work of uh, the databases or uh, the journals. Um, the synchrotrons and the neutron facilities are um, really wrestling with this in a thorough and, and uh, uh, best efforts uh, way and there's a spectrum of, of range of effort. Um, ISIS is an exemplar, and we'll hear about um, the ISIS archiving shortly, as is Diamond, um, who are returning or re retaining all the measured data. Now, Colin Nave had the idea to do a survey of the synchrotron facilities, um, and whilst they're willing to be a repository for raw data, they don't, uh, the, the view was that they don't want to be an archive. Uh, what does that mean? It means that they would not provide instantaneous delivery of raw data um, and they wouldn't 
provide data sets certified to be 100% free of data corruption. Now, the alternatives um, that are coming along, certainly in the UK, are university data repositories and archives. Um, Manchester and Oxford, you can find uh, readily uh, details on their respective websites um, about their plans for their research staff. And it is a serious issue that um, data loss is considered research malpractice. Um, and so it isn't uh, only fraud that is research malpractice. So this is a very serious matter um, that the universities are viewing uh, the policies of the funding agencies and their own ethic uh, on the matter of research um, good practice. So the University of Manchester Research Data Archive launch is next month and there are two key points in its uh, policy which is to endorse the Research Council's UK common principles um, and in particular they look at practical situations like the PI leaving the university um, or indeed dying um, and what is the responsibility that's left with the, uh, the university. And there's a form. So um, we have a form that we can fill in where we provide these details. Now, uh, <coughs> compared to what we are used to, let's say, with um, CCDC, PDB, um, where these are people who know um, about the data that we're, um, <coughs> the process and derived data that we're providing. Um, with the best will in the world, the research data librarians um, will not uh, be able to um, uh, have an intimate knowledge of each field. Um, but they're making a sterling effort, along with the, um, the Digital Curation Center uh, people um, within the UK, um, to define a range of terminologies uh, to help with the metadata descriptions. Now the additional fallback positions, um, you've already seen one which is personal web link. Um, and that has got obviously a time limit um, about uh, you know, how long it might be sustained and maintained. And it's also not digital object identifier linked. Um, So it's a good fallback position, but it has its disadvantages. So how would we describe from the working group our current perspective? Certainly, there is an enthusiasm and an encouragement um, to archive more than what we are at the moment, the derived coordinate, B factor, and structure factor data. And other communities are also um, taking advantage of the technical progress. The astronomers and the particle physicists of note. Um, we take a pride in these things and so um, here we are trying to move it forward and the local data archive, the facility data storage and the personal web link um, look very practical things from our point of view in the working group for the current period. The particle physicists are particularly interesting um, and Herbert has stressed this um, and that is to use cloud storage. And the reaction that I have, let's define it that way, um, is um, do we feel comfortable trusting our data to a commercial agent? And what are the cost issues? But in fact at the moment they look promisingly uh, relatively uh, I mean uh, cheap. Now the working group made proposals um, to the IUCR exec in Adelaide last December and we said authors should provide a permanent and prominent link from an article to the raw data sets underpinning a journal publication <coughs> brackets caveat with a view to making this a formal requirement at such time as the community adopts it. So it's a slide. Uh, secondly, 
Commissions should be charged with the task of defining experimental metadata meanwhile, relevant to their fields, in order to harmonize raw data archiving at the disparate facilities. I was impressed by the range of challenges that the powder diffraction presented there, uh, Brian. Now, the exec change should, in proposal one to May, and that looks like a watering down, which in a way it is, but it's a good and practical endorsement that um, resources can be put forward <laughs> and used to facilitate the making available of raw data. So for our J. Apple Crisp paper, there was a resource overhead in Chester to um, make that happen. Um, and so that was endorsed by the IUCR exec. And also, if other authors now, of course, wish to do it, then I think ways will be found um, to take that forward. Um, I mentioned the role for core data um, on nomenclature and um, to and it provides already a good vehicle for hearing about consistent uh, developments in different communities, astronomy, particle physics, crystallographers. And we have the importance of metadata, um, which John Westbrook never lets us forget, quite rightly. So by way of, uh, of acknowledgement, um, I would just like to thank all members of the working group um, and last year's uh, workshop in Bergen was very important and you can find the um, uh, presentations uh, at that web link and Tom Terwilliger is uh, driving us forward um, with a special issue for Actor D derived from the workshop lectures and Mitchell Gus will join us as chair this afternoon who is the person on the IUCR exec uh, charged with um, looking after this uh, topic and our uh, key liaison person for making it happen. Thank you.